today we're going to talk about the third eye chakra. Um, and many of you know it is also called um, uh, penal gland in the old depictions of it. And the uh, third eye chakra is the sixth chakra. And depending on what um, philosophy or esoteric practice that you go off of, um, there's many different meanings, but it, it stems and it relates to these um, philosophies and religions and um, kind of everybody has something about it um, in Hinduism. It is um, right here and it is the brow, between the brow and Kabbalah. And they say that it leads to a higher state of consciousness and um, it goes into the crown. Um, in Tantra and uh, Tantra Yoga, they believe that it is related to the sun Om, which is as a creation, and um, 10,000 petal lotus. And also, it is depicted as a state of enlightenment, um, tapping into it's an astral plane. Uh, sorry, I just wrote like a bunch of notes. Um, so I'm going to get sidetracked because I do that a lot. Um, but that uh, astral plane is it's really, most people think of it as like a psychic source, uh, it's a connection to the divine where you can like astrally like project when you see visions, when you're more clairvoyant, when you're more tapped into the Godhead. And there's many ways of getting to that place. Um, there's guided meditations, um, yoga, um, tantra, kundalini. Um, but to really start off with, and if um, you haven't ever tried to activate it before, I'd try something simple. Um, pranayama, which is what the breathing exercise is, um, I would go with a fourfold breath. And what you do is you breathe in for four, so you would count one, two, three, four, you hold it, one, two, three, four, you breathe it out, one, two, three, four, and you hold it. And that way it puts you in a trained like state, okay? So you're more aware of the internal and not the external, not what's going on around you. You're really going within yourself. And that brings you in vibration on a higher level of consciousness where you can tap into the divine and you can tap into divinity and um, your subconscious which some people say is spirit or not spirit um, you know and but but it taps you in and um, the problem with uh, the penal gland and the third eye um, one it, it it, it'd be a lot easier to tap into. Um, it, it, depending if you believe that the third eye is part of the penal gland or not, like um, in Men in Black, the uh, believe it is in Theosophy, um, that it is actually the penal gland. And some others say it's not, you know, it's the uh, petrarial gland. That one. But, um, you know, um, so, but with the penal gland, we calcify it all the time. Um, it's really calcified, and that's because of fluoride. And fluoride is in our water, fluoride is in our toothpaste, fluoride is in everything, not in aspartame. Um, so, what we can do and I try to do this as much as I can, is um, drink natural spring water, um, get toothpaste without fluoride, you know, try to limit yourself with that. Um, because it definitely does calcify it, and you're not as clouded as when, you know, you keep on ingesting all this stuff that actually, like, it makes it, like, rock hard, um, you know. But it, the penal gland and the third eye, you know, astral projection, I've done it. It helps me with um, dreaming, um, lucid dreaming, 
and more vivid greens. Um, it also produces melatonin, which helps you, you know, with your schedule. It's, it helps you with your dreaming patterns and such. And it also releases the chemical called DMT. Now, DMT is found in living things, and it is a chemical that is released when you're born and when, you're, when you die, or when your body is in more like a shock like state. Um, and it's a really interesting, interesting chemical. Um, there is, you know, you can get it and you can use it. Um, it's all natural. Um, I'm not condoning any of these drugs, but um, it, it's definitely an experience. Um, you definitely go out of your body and um, explore a whole different fractal world uh, other than here. Um, and so, you know, uh, you can get there with really hardcore meditation. Um, really starting with your breathing and like I said prana um, breathing exercises and techniques are very very good especially for beginning stages and uh, really closing your eyes and just looking straight here like focusing your eyes on your brow and your eyes are closed it's called strategic being and um, that's one of the exercises that they use in imagining um, kind of an indigo colored light right here forming and really focusing on that. Um, and the more and more you train yourself, because it really is a, it, it's a consistent thing that you have to do to really tap in. It's, it's not just going to be like, boom, you're tapped into Godhead. Boom, you're tapped into the universe. No, it's a, it's something that we must practice on a consistent basis. That's why a lot of yogis um, do it. And with like Kundalini and releasing the serpent energy, um, you know, and with Tantra, um, I mean, they practice this on a day to day basis. You know, um, it's, it's very important um, to really align yourself and not just with your third eye but with your other chakras but if you're looking you know for more of a divine I guess connection or clairvoyancy or you know um, visions or astral projection um, you know I would I would really start off uh, just just small and uh, you know doing there's a bunch of guided meditations I'm gonna post them some of my favorites that are um, on YouTube um, that I use um, and I think that'll be a great start to uh, being able to seriously start tapping in because there's so many different um, I guess theories perceptions um, about what the third <clears throat> I really is and what the penal gland really is um, the Egyptians believed it brought them to divinity, you know, and that they, like, and uh, you could see in um, their uh, drawings and um, paintings that, uh, you know, the third eye was very, 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 um, I don't know what's the right word, sometimes I can't articulate myself, I'm sorry, um, it's very dominant. Um, <clears throat> you know, and uh, they used it all the time in hieroglyphics, and uh, so whatever way you're thinking, it, it's depicted in most religions and most philosophies, it's, it's just a way of going about activating it, and I would start slow, I wouldn't start with like Kundalini um, right away, um, I would really just practice on your breathing techniques, and um, vis visualizations of um, that energy point within yourself and the more you practice like I said the more it will evolve so I hope this gave you a little bit um, more than um, you know you're you know yourself but um, 
I hope that I could help and the Matthew to you all and hopefully um, my friend and I will start doing guided meditations. So if we start doing that, that's definitely going to be one of the first ones. So Matthew, have a good day everyone. Bye.